but thyroid cancer has a very good cure rate uh, for most folks. Thyroid cancer occurs uh, actually across all ages. Um, it does happen much more frequently in women. Um, and it can happen at, uh, well it can happen at any age, it does tend to peak around 40s and 50s. Um, but it can happen uh, in children, um, young adults, and uh, throughout um, the lifespan. The thyroid, the thyroid gland is a gland that basically makes a hormone uh, that's important in metabolism. And it sits in the neck, um, in the low neck, right down here. Um, what frequently will bring somebody in is either uh, their physician found uh, a lump in the neck and it's very important that that lump when you swallow will move up and down so uh, oftentimes just looking in the mirror and and or seeing one uh, a friend or or a loved one um, swallow and seeing a lump on one side move up and down will give you an indication that there's a an enlargement of the thyroid gland most of the time enlargements of the thyroid gland are going to be benign most of those are going to not be cancerous but um, it's important when you can see and feel one, that it be evaluated. The types of cancer that occur uh, vary to some degree. There's uh, by far the most common type is called papillary thyroid carcinoma. That's what uh, the vast majority of people that have had thyroid cancer will, will have. Um, it's um, a very treatable form of cancer. The other types of cancers um, Medullary carcinoma, for example, uh, is one that tends to be more that tends to run in families. It tends to be more of a genetic uh, type of uh, cancer. Uh, while it's not always, it, it certainly is much more frequently than the others. Follicular carcinoma is another uh, what we lump together with papillary to call well differentiated thyroid cancer, and it is all it basically has the same risk factors or similar risk factors to papillary. And then there's one. Um, that uh, people may have read about or known uh, people that died of thyroid cancer very quickly and it's called anaplastic thyroid cancer and it's very important to understand that uh, that is a completely uh, separate entity it's a very very uh, aggressive cancer and one that, that uh, moves very quickly um, but the vast vast majority of cancers of the thyroid are not anaplastic We know that radiation exposure definitely is a risk factor. Um, for example, uh, the, the folks that lived near Chernobyl, uh, when that meltdown occurred in the mid-1980s, um, within four years we began to see uh, an increased incidence of thyroid cancer in very young people, people that were between uh, newborns and in fact those whose mothers were pregnant to about five years of age they had a, a, a up to a 50-fold increased risk, 50 times risk, um, and that began to show up very early. Um, whether that uh, will continue to show in, in adults is uh, not completely clear yet, but, but without a doubt the young people were at highest risk. Um, so we know radiation exposure is one. Treatment of, of thyroid cancer is primarily and fundamentally surgical. Um, with the exception of anaplastic cancer, um, the other three are treated with an operation um, that involves removal of part or all of the thyroid gland, depending on the, the stage or the size of the lump. And it may also involve removal of lymph nodes in the, uh, in the area, such as those uh, close to the trachea and the esophagus or possibly out in the lateral neck, out in the, around the jugular vein. Um, it just depends on the clinical situation. Um, we then will uh, use uh, a thyroid hormone uh, called Synthroid or Levothyroxin, which is uh, designed to replace the thyroid, but also we use it to suppress or, or to decrease the activity of any potential cells that may still be in the body. And so that's another form of therapy um, that we use. And then afterwards we follow people. We, it's very important that, uh, that they be followed. We see them uh, on a, on a uh, basis that's uh, regular that uh, then involves physical examination, 
blood tests at times, uh, and ultrasounds, again, to really get a good sense of, of what the, uh, what I say, looking under the hood. So we can really get a good sense of what's going on uh, inside the neck and if there's anything to be concerned about. Uh, personally, I had thyroid cancer and I only had to have half of my thyroid removed because it was so small. Fortunately, I've not had other cancers that I treat, so <laughs> and I'm happy to stay that way. Um, but uh, with one of the nice things is uh, when we go through the biopsy uh, and talk about that, I can tell them what my experience was like. Um, I do understand the anxiety of waiting for results um, and, uh, and the uncertainty. Um, mine was uncertain, the diagnosis was uncertain at the time of surgery. Well, I'm seven years from my diagnosis. Um, and most, uh, particularly young people uh, that are diagnosed, will have an extremely high prognos prognostic rate. So for example, uh, uh, a young woman that is diagnosed um, that doesn't have evidence of spread into the heart, or, or I'm sorry, into the lungs or bones, um, would have uh, on average about a 98% chance of being uh, alive and well at 20 years. So extremely good prognosis. Um, as the cancer is more advanced, uh, that does drop off. But thyroid cancer, uh, with the exception of anaplastic and then uh, somewhat less with the medullary, has a very good cure rate uh, for most folks. It's still a cancer that needs to be dealt with. And, and surgery, as I said, is the, is the treatment. Uh, and follow-up is important, but people can uh, generally uh, anticipate a long and healthy and normal life.